Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Spader again with the Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times, here with Joseph Dykus, also of the Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times. Joseph, how are you today? Doing great. I've, uh, I have one one week of uh, high school football under my belt. I'm looking forward to, what, 14 or the 15 more weeks of this. 15 more weeks, uh, indeed. Uh, you looked really intelligent back there with those books. You're, you're Mr. Book. What are you uh, reading? You know what? I do love books. I love to read. Nice. So what are you reading right now? What is, what's what's on your uh, evening reading list? Well, honestly, of all the books here, I have uh, Agatha Christie, Witness for Perse Persecution or Prosecution. I need to start that one. Um, I've been told go. I need to broaden my horizons beyond just sports books. <laughs> I have the baseball perspectives, which at this point is kind of like our pick 'em from last week. Very outdated and uh, lots of wrong predictions because I started uh, six and nine in my in my week one prediction. You, so. you, you did start six and nine. Uh, the veterans in the group, Mike Lefkow and myself, are nine and six. Mike is not here with us today. He uh, I think he got jury duty. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so doing he, his duty as a citizen, right? He, well, yes, he's doing his duty as a citizen. He did send in his picks, so we will have his picks as we uh, as we move along in the in the show. Uh, but before we move to the picks, uh, I just wanted to get your impressions, Joseph. I mean, you were at Pittsburgh, which is one of the best places to see high school football yes. in the Bay Area, and then you were at an afternoon game at Menlo Atherton. Just describe what uh, Pittsburgh was like. I know it was a, a one sided result. And, yeah. uh, um, you know, the, the coach was missing and uh, right. so um, he'll be back apparently this week. But anyhow, uh, what was that like, the vibe of seeing Pittsburgh football on a Friday night? Well, first of all, they have one of the biggest bands I think I've ever seen for a high school team. Uh, at least, it uh, has to be at least 50 or 60 kids. I think it's 100. 100. That wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I mean, it was it was packed. There was not, there wasn't a seat to be had in that entire stadium. Um, and home side, home side, and I mean, it was fifty nine nothing on the football side of it. Pittsburgh was just so much better than Bethel when it came to just talent, athleticism, size. Couldn't take a whole lot away from that, but that meant the crowd on the Pittsburgh side was just loud the entire game. Um, which was actually one of the shorter games I've been to because they started the running clock in the in the second quarter. So fans uh, weren't there for as long as probably they hoped they'd be. There you go. And then on Saturday afternoon, you went over to uh, Atherton uh, yes. to see uh, M. A. Bellerman. You weren't sure if uh, if Jurion Dickey was going to play when you got uh, when you drove over there. Uh, no. It quickly became apparent that he was going to play, and and boy did he play. I mean, yeah. to be down twenty to nothing and for. For Dickey, the uh, the Valley Christian transfer to have the uh, the impact he had, and uh, I thought you did a nice job with your stories over the weekend. And you got another one coming up. That I do. Be, I believe tomorrow on uh, Mercury News and East Bay Times websites about how Dickey's uh, presence at MA will uh, will impact the CCS moving forward. Yeah. Uh, you were uh, you were pretty impressed by what you saw from from Jury on on Saturday, huh? I was. You know. You know. You you. you the entire summer, I heard he's a five star. He's a five star. He's this top player, and I was like, okay, let's see if he lives up to the hype. And I mean, he had four touchdowns. One of them was a, uh, one of them was a was a reverse that might have been a we thought might have been one of those little shovel passes. Um, as uh, Mitch Stevens said, they all kind of look the same. I agree. I think those should all just be handoffs. Um, that's another rant for another day. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, no, Jurion Dickey at one point was pretty much single-handedly keeping uh, Menlo Atherton in the game. And then the floodgates just opened in the in the third quarter, and they pretty much took control. I know they got – I know Bellarmine got to a one-score game, but you felt like Menlo Atherton was just in control after that. Um, right, right. There was some suspense there about whether he'd play or not, but when you saw him warming up, you were like, yeah, he's probably going to play. Huge, huge win for M.A., um, I was probably at the game of the weekend where yes. where Sarah went out to uh, to Folsom, uh, four hour bus ride given the traffic for for Sarah coming from Ooh. San Mateo out to Folsom, and that was a huge huge win for uh, for Sarah. I'm not sure Folsom's gonna want to see me go to any of their home games uh, going down yeah. the road. I don't think I've ever seen Folsom win a home game. 
<laughs> and they've won. I think the only games they've lost, except for maybe one over the last decade, have been games that I've been at. You know, uh, maybe maybe that's like maybe you're the Bay Area good luck charm for the Bay Area teams. <laughs> Think of it that way. You're like they're like, oh, we're playing in Folsom. Is Darren Sabedra going to be covering our game? Is he going to be there? Oh my God, keep him away. Uh, no, I've seen Bellerman win there. I've seen De La Salle win there. I think once or twice, maybe twice, and then and then Sarah. Uh, so uh, that was a close. That was a close game too. That was such uh, a that was such a great game. Um, I mean, Sarah's strategy of going to that double wing offense to to not only pounds uh, pound Folsom's defensive line for for huge chunks to keep uh, keep the chains moving, but also to take time off the clock and keep the Folsom offense off the field. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Sarah was dealing with all sorts of muscle cramps, and every, I mean, it seemed like every play somebody for Sarah was going down, but. They were able to pull it out a huge play at the goal at the goal line with about three minutes to go where Folsom was going in for a mm -hmm. what was probably going to be a, a potential uh, winning touchdown because I, I got to think Folsom was going to go for two there with three yeah. minutes to go and the ball gets knocked out at the one yard line and then Sarah recovers in the end zone and, and ends up running out the clock. Get, they ended up uh, running out of the back of the end zone on the final play for a safety that made it 17 to 12. But uh, a very, very impressive win by Sarah. Um, and now they go to De La Salle on Friday. for a Which ESPN, is the game of the week, right? Uh, ESPN U game, Sarah at De La Salle, uh, 8 o'clock kickoff. We'll have our prediction here later on in the show. But uh, I'm really looking forward to that game. It'll be Patrick Walsh going back to his alma mater, um, he's coached against them. I looked through Max Preps' uh, record book uh, 10 times in the Max Preps era, so since 2004, and his Padres are 0 and 10 against De La Salle. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, but um, I don't think I have anything else to add except let's get to our picks. What do you think? Yeah, let's get to our picks. All right. Uh, we've got a few Thursday games. I hope these are Thursday games because that's what it says on the Max Preps schedule, and we have a lot of – a lot of uh, movement in these games because of the officiating crisis. So yeah. we, at, at this point, these are Thursday games. I assume that they're there for a reason. We got Hollister going to Wilcox. Hollister uh, beat Oak Grove 28 to nothing last week. And Wilcox obviously got the big win over Valley Christian behind Andrew Palacios, who ran for 139 yards. Uh, Wilcox is five, eight, and one against Hollister in the Max Preps era, including a twenty-two to eighteen loss last year. I'm taking yeah. Wilcox. Who you got? I, I'm taking Wilcox too. I'm actually going to be at that game. You uh, are going to well. be at the game. Check out the story at uh, MercuryNews.com and EastBayTimes.com. Yeah. Um, they'll be filing it probably Thursday night. It either posts Thursday night or Friday morning, but it will be there for the all day Friday. So check all it out Friday, all, day, yeah. all day Friday. Um, lefty's taking Wilcox too. So it looks like all three of us are going with Wilcox. Mm -hmm. uh, game two on the list is another Thursday game. Christopher out of Gilroy, which is now uh, Christopher's now in the Blossom Valley Athletic League. They're going to go up against Piedmont Hills. Piedmont Hills scored 21 points in the fourth quarter last week to beat Willow Glen 21-14. And Christopher behind Jackson Robinson, a sophomore yeah. quarterback, who was 9 of 14 for a buck 77 and two touchdowns, led uh, Christopher over North Monterey County 31 to nothing. Christopher's at home. I'm taking Christopher in this game. Left cow's taking Christopher. Who are you taking? You know, I hate to agree again. I think I'm going to take Christopher, too. Which, you know, kind of a weird stat from that game. They won 31 nothing, but they only had 39 rushing yards. Kind of kind of strange. There you go. Mm, that is that is strange, but they got the buck 77 from their sophomore quarterback through the yeah. air, which uh, was all they needed to, to turn back North Monterey County. Uh, game three on our list, also a Thursday game, Tack Fidena Stadium in Fremont, where Kennedy of Fremont will be playing Washington of Fremont. Um, it's an interesting matchup. Washington won the Battle of the Boulevard last week over American. They're both on Ameri They're both on Fremont Boulevard, and Washington won that game 41-34. Kennedy lost to Mount Eden 34-8. But going through the Max Preps uh, results, Kennedy has won eight in a row over Washington. Yeah. But before that, Washington won 10 in a row over Kennedy. 
Uh, last year was 21 to nothing in favor, obviously, of Kennedy. Uh, this is my daughter's alma mater, Washington, and I'm going to go with Washington to win this game. I'm going to go with Kennedy. I think history repeats itself. <laughs> got to go with Kennedy there. You're going to go Kennedy. Who's, to go uh, who's, uh, who's lefty guy? Lefty's going with Washington. Oh, wow. So Lepkow and I are on the same uh, – we're on the same page so far, although I think we're going uh, different directions here in game four on the list. Las Lomas on a uh, Friday night travels to Union City to play James Logan. James Logan 0-1, Las Lomas 0-1. I guess a, the big question mark is will this Adam Tao play for uh, Las Lomas, who rolled, he rolled his ankle against uh, Rancho Catade and uh, – uh, the wheels fell off, so to speak. Yeah. I think Las Lomas had an early advantage in that game, and then, and then uh, ended up losing forty-two to eighteen. Meanwhile, James Logan lost on the road to California, thirty-one to seven, and Cal High basically has a rebuilt roster. And I think all of us took James Logan to win that game last week. We did, we did. That was. Um, I'm going Las Lomas to win on the road. Left Cal's going James Logan to win at home. Who do you got? I'm 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 gonna go with I'm gonna go with uh, go with you. I think the I think Los Lomas. You're gonna take Los Lomas. All right. Uh, game five on the list. Liberty out of Brentwood traveling to Los Gatos. Uh, Mike Cable he used to coach a prospect, so prospect down there in Saratoga, so nearby uh, to Los Gatos. Obviously, he's familiar with the Wildcats. Um, so anyhow, Liberty's traveling down to Los Gatos. Los Gatos won this game last year in Brentwood, thirty-eight to seventeen. Mm -hmm. uh, Los Gatos lost its season opener to a really good Corona yeah. Del Mar team, twenty-eight fourteen. Well, uh, uh, Liberty beat this team from Modesto. Was it Enox from Modesto? Yeah, mm -hmm. which I could I didn't find a I didn't see a whole lot of info on them. Yeah, fifty-six to nothing. Um, I think Los Gatos rolls. I think Los uh, Gatos same. wins. I think it's going to be close either. Yeah, I think Los Gatos wins. Uh, Left Cal takes Los Gatos, so all of us are taking Los Gatos in this one. Yeah. Um, game six on the list, Lee. The man, they lost a heartbreaker to Lincoln of San Jose last week. Yeah. They're going to be going up against Pioneer, which won a, a thriller in the last minute over Santa Teresa to, to avenge their triple overtime loss to end last season to Santa Teresa mm -hmm. in the CCS playoffs. Um, Pioneer's at home. This was a tough one for me to pick, but I'm going to go with Pioneer to win at home. Who you got? I mean, I've got I've got Pioneer to to win as well. I, I will say I talked to Kevin Collins, uh, Lincoln's coach, yesterday, and he said that they they won with two seconds to go. So it was, they were two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Lee was two seconds away from a win, and uh, their the Lincoln quarterback just scrambled around and got his way in pretty much as his time expired. Oh my goodness! So a huge win there for Lincoln over Lee. We're it looks like all of us are taking Lee to go to zero and two. I think this is gonna be a really close game. Uh, um, I mean, it could go either way. It's a I mean, toss up. But I'm taking Pioneer at home. So all three of us on Pioneer. You're Pioneer mm -hmm. too, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, game seven on the list. We're we're doing fifteen here. Heritage at Granada. Heritage at 1-0. Devin Rivers with 203 yards and 16 carries and four touchdowns last week. He's the Fresno State bound running back for uh, Heritage. Uh, going up against Granada, uh, which lost uh, to Archbishop Reardon on the road uh, mm -hmm. in San Francisco in a, in a game that kind of ended ugly. Uh, yeah. You had a report on the uh, Reardon kid who uh, was injured with yes. about four minutes to go, uh, Aiden uh, Loxa. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, fortunately, he is uh, doing better. It like he's okay. He's okay, but he got a little bit of a scare, a little tingling in his back after being slammed down to the turf. Mm -hmm. uh, so, ugly, ugly way, ugly end to that game. I'm taking Heritage to win on the road over Granada. Uh, uh, I do. I, I I hate to agree again, but I th yeah, I think Devin Rivers. I don't know if he has 200 yards again, but I think he's going to have a big game. All right, we are all taking Heritage. To win this game so game eight on the list another tough one for clayton valley charter they're going to be going up against del oro loomis a traditional power out of the uh, sacramento area del oro is two and zero with wins over intercom and del campo both impressively 35 8 34 7 whereas um clayton valley lost to a really good salinas team 21 to 14 at home last week they're going to be back at home in concord on friday 
hate to say this about the ugly Eagles, but I, I think they're going to go to 0-2. I'm taking Del Oro to win this game. Left Cal's taking Clayton Valley. I got to go with our boy Lefty. I think Clayton Valley wins. You think Clayton Valley gets on yeah. the – I know that Del Oro's won two, two games big, but I can't see the ugly Eagles going to 0-2. Yeah, uh, sorry, Murph. I did pick against you, but uh, maybe that'll motivate them. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, next one on the list: Midi against Mountain View. Both uh, both Midi and Mountain View won last week. Midi matched his win total from last season with a very impressive win over Palma. And uh, Midi's only win last week or last season was against Mountain View, thirty-five, thirty-four. Mountain View has a new coach. Tim Lugo's taken over from uh, the uh, uh, Shelly Smith, who was uh, the head coach for a long time. He's, he retired. Uh, Mountain View got an impressive win last week over the Kings Academy. Um, both quarterbacks were solid last week. Wills Towers for Mitty and Kevin Conway for um, Mountain View. Mountain View's at home, but I'm taking Mitty in this game. I'm going to disagree again. I'm going with Mountain View. You going Mountain View? I was the one. I was the one guy. I think who picked them last week. I'll pick them again this week. See if uh, see if both them and me go to two. No, I took them last week too. Oh, okay, I did take them. And Lefty is going Midi in this game. Mm. So we're both going for Midi to go to two and zero. Oh. Just a few more games on the list, including a couple of the big ones. I mean, all of the big ones. Uh, Alhambra Livermore. Who do you got? I uh, both teams. I, I'm going more. with the home team, Livermore. Uh, me too. And left cow too. Yeah. So all three on Livermore over Alhambra. Monterey Trail, 0 and 2, but losses to Folsom and Dallas. I mean, yeah. Who put this schedule together for Monterey Trail? I thought I mean Sarah's got a Sarah's cra got a crazy schedule opening on the road against Folsom and De La Salle. Mm -hmm. At least Monterey Trail played De La Salle at home. But now they're going back now they're going on the road to play St. Francis. Which St. Um, Francis won a, won a close game. Against a really good Central Catholic team last week. Right. Um, Monterey Trail was only down 22-20 in the fourth quarter to De La Salle before losing 36-20. They also have the 47-18 loss to Folsom. I'm going St. Francis to win at home. Left Cow's going St. Francis. Same. I think, I think I think Monterey Trail is about to be the best 0-3 team in California. <laughs> yeah. um, just because, I mean, that's that's a br <laughs> what a brutal way to start your year. <laughs> that is a pretty crazy schedule. Um, Bellarmine at McClyman's, you're going to be at this game on Friday night. Um, I will ben, be. Fapp, ben Fapp had a huge day for Bellarmine last, last week in the loss. So did uh, Javon Reels. You were very impressed with that defensive lineman, huh? I was. He 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 seemed to be in the backfield every single play. Um, I didn't see what his final stats were, but I'm sure that if they kept track of pressures, he probably had at least ten pressures in that game. He's listed at six one two seventy. Max going to counter with Malik Richardson, who weighs who uh, comes in at six two two seventy three. Mm. Um, Mac playing a season opener. Bellerman going on the road up to Oakland. But I'm going to go with Bellerman again. I took Bellerman last week and lost. I'm taking Bellerman again. Who do you got? I, I'm going to go with Mac. I'm going to go with the home yeah. team. You're going to um, go with the home team? It, it just depends on which, which Bellerman team shows up, right? Because the first half Bellerman team looked like the class of CCS. Second half, I don't know. But, again, that, I mean, they they got, gas? did they run what? out of gas? on? It was an afternoon game. Did they – Did they? I mean, at first game, did they did they get winded? Did they run out of gas, or or was just MA that good? I think good? MA just found their found their groove. I mean, that's another Bellerman. I mean, that's two tough games to start their year. Uh, you know, go go to MA and then you go to to Mac back to back weeks. They're probably just ready to go play a home game. Okay, so uh, you've got Mac. Left Cow and I have Bellerman. Uh, just a couple more games on the list. This this is another really really interesting matchup. Camp Alindo. Going to Aptos, both of these teams coached by, I mean, really, really good coaches. Kevin Macy at Camp Alindo, Randy mm -hmm. Blankenship at, at Aptos. Randy runs the uh, wing T. I I mean, he's like the, the guru of the wing T. Last year, in one of the most stunning scores I think we've ever seen, <laughs> seen at this level, Aptos went to Campo and won 49 to nothing. I remember calling Kevin Macy the next day. It was our Monday morning lights yeah, column yeah. for – that Monday, 
And Kevin's response to me was, I can confirm it was the right score. <laughs> <laughs> um, to Macy's credit, he ended up leading Camp Alindo to the North Coast Section Division II Championship last year and a regional spot against McClymans. Um, so, I mean, that just shows what yeah. kind of coach, coach Macy is. I know Campos had this game probably circled all, all summer, all spring, whenever they set this thing up. But 49 nothing is a lot of points to make up. I'm and that wing T is tough to defend. And Aptos is now at home. I'm taking Aptos. Who do you got? I'm gonna take Campo Lindo. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with Campo. I think they avenged last last year's loss, and maybe you'll you'll put a call in to Kevin Mason. He'll be a little bit happier this time. <laughs> He'll say, "I can confirm that yeah. was the right score." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, left cow's taking Aptos. All right. Okay. So you're the only one going with uh, with Campo. All right, this is the one that uh, this is the one, this is the one that was a tough one for me to pick. Sarah one and zero at De La Salle one and zero. De La Salle wasn't that impressive last week against a really good Monterey Trail team. Mm -hmm. Folsom or Sarah obviously getting the win at Folsom. I woke up this morning thinking I was going to take Sarah. And then when I started doing this, I ended up circling De La Salle. I, I mean, 10 and 0 against Sarah. I think the lights are going to be bright. Both teams are going to show up. Both teams are going to play, uh, you know, to their potential. I think it's going to be a terrific high school game. But in the end, I think Sarah, uh, De La Salle is going to find a way to squeak by Sarah um, on its home field. Left Cow is taking. De La Salle, so two De La Salles. Yeah, uh, man. Well, I'm, I, I I think that uh, I think Sarah goes goes into De La Salle in front of a national audience on ESPNU and uh, gets the win. I'm gonna go with Whoa. Sarah. Yeah, close. Go big, going big here. Close. Oh, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be something like 17, 14, 21, 20. It's it's not. I don't think it's gonna be a high scoring game. It's gonna be. Very close. Hard hitting, mm -hmm. Turnovers here and there. Yes. Just big hits, big plays. Yes. And, and you're taking, I, I see that, that kind of game, but I see De La Salle somehow pulling it out, but you mm -hmm. see Sarah pulling it out. So, yes. uh, two for what, what, did, uh, what did Alan Ball tell you uh, before the season? Teams aren't, teams aren't afraid of De La Salle. Teams anymore? aren't afraid of De La Salle. So we'll see if that's the case. I know Sarah will not be afraid of De La Salle. Uh, that's 100%. And I could see Sarah winning this game. Um, I just stay us out playing at home under the bright lights. Um, I think they're finally going to play, you know, up to their potential. And I think they're going to win a nail biter. So we'll see. Um, I'll be standing on the Sarah sideline, which is where reporters stand. So that we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, last game on the list before we wrap this up. Pittsburgh team you saw last week going yes. down to San Diego for the Honor Bowl on Saturday afternoon. It'll be a noon start at uh, Cathedral Catholic in San Diego. They're going to be playing against Liberty of Henderson, Nevada. And I did some research on Liberty of Henderson, Nevada, and they are an impressive program. Yes. Uh, I mean, an impressive program. They're one and one, but their, their loss was to lone peak of utah last week 20 to 19 they also have a win over palo verde of nevada 34 to 7. i mean they they've finished i've looked like number two i mean bishop gorman is in nevada and they're that's the team that almost beat modern day last week and they've been like number two in the state in a few season ending yeah. rankings i'm taking liberty to win this game yeah, I mean, kind of like I said, I mean, I couldn't really take away a whole lot from the Pittsburgh Bethel game because, like, you, their receivers, by the way, are exceptional. Uh, right. Quarterback was great, but it was it was a scrimmage. It was a glorified right. scrimmage right. at a certain point. And I mean, now they're going having to turn around and play on the road in a completely different region. Well, the neutral, state. yeah, on the road, yeah, for both teams. But for both but teams. Liberty has played. I assume they've played some pretty good competition already. Yes, which 
Yeah, I'm, I'll, I, I'm going to go with Liberty as well. But that again, what these guys if Pittsburgh comes out and puts up, really, puts up points and puts on a show. Right. Pittsburgh has great talent. So maybe they, they maybe they come up and maybe they learn from, as, as you talked to uh, Charlie Ramirez, who was the uh, fill-in coach last week. You talked to Charlie and, and he said they learned from their trip against another Liberty team, the Liberty of Bakersfield. And they, mm -hmm. they lost to them in a regional last year, 35 to 7 to end their season. Um, and that was bright lights in, in Bakersfield in that stadium that they played in. Um, he said it was. He said this year it's going to be a business trip. Last year it sounded like the, the the players kind of thought it was more like a vacation, or they didn't really know what it was going to be like. This year they know what they're going going to San Diego to do. I'm looking forward to this result. I mean, if Pittsburgh wins, man, that will be a huge win going forward because they got Folsom coming up later on, uh, later on in September, and they also have McClymans on their schedule. So uh, we'll see how the Pirates do. Um, again, Left Cow took Pittsburgh, so um, we'll see. Any? No, go ahead. I was, I was saying one thing. I'm going to add just as I, I got to respect these 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 uh, these Bay Area teams for scheduling some real competition this early in the season. Like, you know, they could be playing, you know, other maybe smaller schools. They're like, no, we're the best. We want to schedule the best. So I got to gotta respect the coaches for doing that. No doubt. No doubt. I think we might be doing a story at some point uh, on this whole month of just unbelievable matchups and a tip of the cap to all the coaches and athletic directors and school administrators who made made this happen because mm -hmm. uh it is a for high school football in northern california it's a pretty exciting month yeah given these matchups i mean you know so look really really looking forward to seeing how they unfold including saturday night i mean friday night uh sarah de la salle and also bellarmine mcclimans and and the list mm -hmm. goes on and on so um that's going to be a wrap for us today, be sure to get a digital subscription uh, so you can get digital access for the entire season at mercurynews.com and eastbaytimes.com. I think for new subscribers, there's a special deal going yeah. on. So check it out. Um, and uh, anything else to add, Joseph, before we say so long? Well, look for, looking forward to uh, getting that Jerry on Dickey story out and um, got something worked on with the, uh, the Big Bone game. That's going to be played later this uh, later this week. So look out for that on uh, Mercury News East Bay Times. Yep. The traditional Thanksgiving game will be on Labor Day weekend for the second year in a row. And uh, Joseph will tell, tell us all about it. And also uh, be sure to check out Thursday where we have our season, um, our, our weekly preview. Yes. So our weekly preview will be out Thursday morning. So And coverage on the weekend. Indeed. We, we uh, got seven days a week. The, seven days a week here. Days high week. That roundup on Saturday. Yeah. I, I've had a few people tell me that roundup's pretty impressive. Yeah. And by the way, coaches, if you're listening to this, send us in your scores. Send us your scores, your stats. Not just scores. Got to send in a couple of details or you ain't going to make the roundup. It yeah. can't just be the score. We got to know maybe, you know, did somebody score in the last five minutes? Did somebody rush for three touchdowns? Did they, I mean, even if you don't have the exact number of stats, at least give us who scored or maybe somebody who made a great defensive play and we'll make sure to include them in the roundup. So exactly. anyhow, you can do that at high schools at bayareanewsgroup.com. Send in your email, right? Right, right. And that's where you can also send in your, your athlete of the week nominations, boys and girls. We love to hear who, who we should spotlight. So Ex coaches, athletic Ex directors, do it. Exactly. All right, Joseph, we're gonna wrap this up. We'll see you down the road, man. All right, see you down the road.